Hi everybody, so today is, I don't know whether it's day, it's been going on for nearly, it's been going on for a few days now, we've got the uh, defamation trial, Bruce Lumen versus 10 and um, Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson. Yesterday Brittany Higgins uh, gave her account, now I actually missed um, part where she actually described the assault of what happened. Um, but I think today is the final day of, of hers and then she's going to go under cross-examination and I have a feeling that they're going to go in a little bit hard. Now just remember, it's a civil trial and so you only have to look at on the balance of probability. There is no beyond reasonable doubt. The, um, the, uh, even the burden, you know, so the burden of proof is lower so and there's some stuff that is able to be admitted into a civil trial that you can't admit into a uh, criminal trial there's a lot more um hearsay that you can have a lot more uh hearsay evidence generally sometimes in a civil trial than a criminal trial um because of the fact that you've got to have the better of proof so there's going to be a lot of opinion uh, opinion evidence uh, in this defamation trial. One of the most startling things from this um, is how Parliament House, the House of the People, the place where all of the decisions, for, when you think about the fact that Parliament House is where the decisions are made that affect the citizens of this country, and this country as a whole is made, has a culture where it is okay to SA women and to be drunk on the premises, to have alcohol on the premises. Now I know it has a multifaceted, um, I know that it has many uses, I know they have after hours functions, but for the average Joe, for the average person, you have to uh, be fit and sound when you do your job. Many jobs you have to have drunk and that drug and alcohol testing, and that can be random. Um, and you know you can have alcohol in your system for up to eight hours afterwards. Uh, they say eight hours for a drug test. Is it twelve hours for uh, uh, drugs? So. And you have to be of sound mind. Could you imagine if you found out that your heart surgeon or your cardiac or your surgeon that was going to perform your, your operation liked to have a drink before starting the operation? I mean, that doctor would not be able to go, uh, would not be able to function. And yet, decisions that are made for this country, it seems to be okay to have a drink at lunchtime or be drunk. Now Julia Banks um, wrote a book and she talked about the fact that she had a, a, a male colleague come on to her in the Prime Minister's office while they were waiting to vote and was talking about that they were there was drinking going on. Why and how is this acceptable? We've also had the Porter, the Taj, Joyce, where they've all had affairs, I mean Barnaby's married his, uh, as part of the office. I mean, why or how is this acceptable? Is it any wonder that we've got to this point now where somebody was allegedly raped in Parliament? And I think the most telling thing was is that not only were they able to get into Parliament House drunk, they were left unattended drunk. Now I know they have passes and I know that they were there and everything like that, but surely there has to be a, where they go, you cannot be on the premises drunk. Because think about, again, think about the risk. What if they had fallen? And so now we've had this uh, um, this assault taken place. Um, people, oh, look, I've, I've been trying to keep an open mind. I've been watching, trying to keep an open mind. I know that Norman has changed his story, probably more than he's changed his underwear. 
I don't know which version is correct. We do know that he has admitted to lying um, to several people. But um, lying is not a criminal offence. Lying on oath is. And I don't believe he has outrightly lied under oath. I could be wrong. And if I have, if I am, please tell me. But lying under oath is an offence. Being a liar isn't. I mean, imagine how many people would uh, would be in our jails if uh, lying was a criminal offence. So his story's changed several times. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so it's, <laughs> the whole thing's messy, but I'm pretty disgusted that we have an environment where decisions are made in our parliament and that people can be can be plastered. I mean, we, there's been pictures and everyone laughs and look at look at Barnaby. He looks like he's drunk. Um, there is there was also a, a senator that had to be, if you remember rightly, came back after lunch and she had she staggered across the house. She had to be literally escorted across for the vote. Um, and then she denied that she was drunk. I don't know what else she was, but she looked drunk. You know, this behaviour has to stop. And if we want to talk about workplace reform, workplace reform has to start in Parliament House. It has to start in the People's House. It's my house. <laughs> my house, my rules. Um, and also, uh, don't forget, there's all the allegations, which again was swept under the carpet and hidden. All the allegations about what happened in the prayer room. So... The, the government that the new government there's been a change of government since all of this happened but the new government really has the opportunity to change the perception and and fix this now the prayer room allegations uh, allude to the fact that there were men that were that were compromised as well as so you know so everyone People are being put into situations that they shouldn't be put into in a workplace. And that's just not on. So, um, so I'm getting ready to watch the rest of Brittany Higgins' testimony and let's see what the day brings. But anyway, um, it'll be on YouTube. They do remove it straight away because they don't want people to go back. You know, you've got to sort of watch it live. It goes to private afterwards because... There's so much media attention on this case at the moment, and I know there was over ten thousand people watching her testimony yesterday um, on on the on the YouTube. Um, the courtroom was full, and I imagine it's going to be again. I mean, this is bringing a big. Um, this is once again putting Parliament House in the spotlight, and I really think it's time for the politicians to lift their games. I would love drug and alcohol drug and alcohol testing to have to occur to our politicians. Could you imagine how many could be ineligible to actually enter the house if they were drunk? You know? Anyway, just my thought, just my rants. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you later. Bye.